ancient Egypt, a land full of mysteries, puzzles, and amazing sights. You may have heard of the great pyramids, beautiful churches, and gold-wrapped pharaohs. But Egypt in the past also had strange habits, clever solutions, and strange things that would make even the most skeptics scratch their heads and sometimes even scare them. Explorers, buckle up, because today we're going to look into nine strange things you didn't know about. Have you ever thought that the cops in your area could use some more, say, flair? The Egyptians were smarter than you by thousands of years. Take a picture of police officers walking the hot streets with baboons on leashes instead of smelly dogs. Yes, these old poor fissers were the first law enforcers following lawbreakers around like dogs on a leash. In artifacts from Egypt's fifth dynasty, we can see these quick-moving animals catching bad guys by the leg and giving them a kind of swift justice that only a baboon could. Don't be fooled, though. These animals weren't just good at one thing. Instead of fighting crime, they were shaking a leg, which means they were dancing for fun. It gets better than that. These fuzzy bartenders knew how to make beer and pick veggies like no one else. When you read about a police dog in the news, remember that baboons were the first four-legged cops who kept the peace, one banana at a time. If you think your goldfish is a special pet, wait until you hear how the Egyptians treated their fish, or should we say, gods. Think about living by the Nile and sharing its banks with not only fish and birds, but also huge, dangerous crocodiles. But here's the catch. These weren't dangerous animals that needed to be avoided. They were holy gifts in the flesh. Imagine that your pet snake is lying in the sun, but you know that it's on its way to something much higher. For the Egyptians, these crocodiles were holy gifts to Sobek, who was in charge of water and the Nile floods. Do not think that these holy animals were treated very well when they were mummified, though. These VIPs, very important predators, didn't use resin, which is a must for mummifying people. Instead, they chose a more natural way to preserve their bodies. When you throw a coin into a fountain to get lucky, think about how the Egyptians took it a step further and made crocs into heavenly gifts, all without the comfort of resin. Beautiful, isn't it? Today's toothpaste ads show happy people with clean breath, but imagine an ad from ancient Egypt that said, fight bad breath with the powerful mix of bull hooves, ash, and burnt eggshells. That was, in fact, the makers of the pyramid's secret weapon for clean teeth. This isn't minty fresh. It's a rough mix that might be nature's own tooth sandpaper. Even though it sounds like something from a don't try this at home book, this is how Egyptians took care of their teeth. The earthy mix was like cleaning your teeth with nature's grit. It was put directly on your teeth and gums. Does it work? Maybe for cleaning with machines. But let's just say that it was a little overzealous as it caused the gums to bleed a lot. Take a moment to think about the ancient Egyptians when you don't like the taste of your fluoride toothpaste. They used to brush their teeth with things like bull hooves and burned eggshells. It's dedication like that. Get ready for a whole new level of cat love from the ancient Egyptians if you think wearing cat ears is the highest form of cat love. Egyptians didn't just make easy memorials or cute online tributes, they went all out. They shaved their eyebrows off when their beloved cat crossed the rainbow bridge. You read that right, brows are gone. Imagine looking in the mirror and giving up all of your best features to remember your late, furry friend. The crying didn't end there. Families kept crying until those brows grew back, which was a normal time for moving from sadness to acceptance. Remember the ancient Egyptians the next time you cuddle with your cat or even just share a cute cat joke. They took cat love to a whole new browless level. How did you treat a cut or open wound before antibiotics? If you were an Egyptian, you'd go through the kitchen, but not to find a first aid kit. You'd look for moldy bread. People used this everyday item to do more than just let you know they needed to clean out their kitchen. 
It was also an ancient medical wonder. Why did this work then? In other words, the mold on the bread made chemicals that were like nature's antibiotics and kept the bad germs around the wound at bay. It's like the great-great-grandfather of penicillin. It may sound a little yeasty, but this way of treating wounds is more groundbreaking than it sounds. When you're about to use a band-aid or an antibiotic cream, think about how smart people in ancient Egypt used their moldy bread loaves to heal themselves and save their lives. We use Tupperware to keep our food fresh, right? They did have something much cooler and a little creepier though, canopic jars. Of course, these weren't for keeping extra spaghetti. They were used to keep human organs cool while they were being mummified. Yes, you read that right. Human parts neatly packed in their own jars with a god watching over each one. Think about this. There are four pretty jars with the heads of four different gods on the lids. They are not just any gods, they are the sons of Horus, the god with the bird head. One jar has a baboon head cap that fits over your lungs. Your stomach is safe in another one that has a dog watching over it. A falcon takes care of your innards and treats your liver like a human head. So even though it sounds sad, it was an interesting mix of art, ritual, and yes, practicality. When you put your leftovers in plastic bags the next time, Think about this ancient system that was meant to do more than just keep things fresh. It was meant to give people endless life. The woman walks into a royal court with a scepter in her hand. She's wearing a crown and wait for it, a beard. No, this is not a Shakespearean play. It's based on the real life of Hatshepsut, Egypt's second female queen. In a time when men were usually in charge, this brave queen didn't just sit on her chair. She owned it, fake beard and all. Think of the bravery and brilliance. It's the same thing as putting on a fake mustache, but with more power and weight. The best part is that it worked. Hatshepsut wasn't just pretending to be a girl. She was breaking gender roles all over the place and leading her people through one of Egypt's best times of prosperity. If someone says, queen's beard to show they don't believe something, you can tell them that it really did appear and was nothing short of legendary. Why use mouse bones as jewellery? For the Egyptians, this wasn't just a weird little thing. It was a cure-all for kids that they could wear. It was kind of like a rabbit's foot or four-leaf clover from today. But these charms had a bit of an ick factor to them. Parents thought that putting mouse bones in a bag and hanging it around their kids' necks could make them healthy and even help with problems like wetting the bed. Don't worry, child. This necklace of mouse bones has your back. Is an old trick employed by parents. Think your grandmother's home treatments are a little strange? Remember that at least she isn't telling you to wear a mouse bone necklace. Don't bother with fancy spas and expensive face care. Cleopatra, who was the most beautiful person in history, had her own spa day where she bathed in sour donkey milk. Doesn't it sound strange? But science backs it up. Lactic acid, which is found in sour milk, is a natural exfoliator that helps skin look fresh and healthy. Imagine stepping into a tub full of donkey milk and letting the natural acids do their thing while you feel like a queen from Egypt. Cleopatra wasn't just playing in the water, she was taking a bath that was as beneficial to her health as any modern chemical peel. It was like she was getting the most out of her beauty routine. So, the next time you want to find the spring of youth, think about the unique beauty routine that Cleopatra used. Do not worry. You most likely will not need 7,000 donkeys to try it. Explorers, there you have it. Ancient Egypt wasn't just pyramids and pharaohs. It was a world rich in ingenuity, spirituality, and sometimes downright strange practices. When you look at history in its most basic form, isn't it fascinating? Thanks for watching. Also,